ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ లిస్నింగ్ టు ప్రసన్న సార్ ఐ వాజ్ రిమైండెడ్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ద క్రిటికల్ గ్యాప్స్ దట్ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ ఇన్ వాక్సల్ గుడ్స్ టుడే సో గుడ్ న్యూస్ ఇస్ దట్ ఐఎమ్ అవేర్ ఆఫ్ దోస్ గ్యాప్స్ ద బ్యాడ్ న్యూస్ ఇస్ దట్ ఫిలింగ్ దోస్ గ్యాప్స్ కాస్ట్ మనీ so <laughs> which we don't have so it's a chicken and egg situation which i think carries on for a very long time but um so yeah i um i think uh, my story is bit more from when the rubber hits the road kind of a situation um first of all a little bit about us we were officially founded in 2017 uh, but really the journey started much earlier i uh, studied at the university of wisconsin in madison and i pursued my masters and phd there uh, i uh, landed up at that university without a scholarship and my i said you know we cannot afford to go there but my dad said okay we can afford the flight tickets so go and see if you can get a scholarship on on campus if somebody is willing to hire you and i happened to run into an electrical engineer who was working in the radiology department at the university there and he showed me a video of an mri and i realized that there is a huge field out there in medicine where engineers can make a huge contribution and so that's how i got into the field of mri a very powerful university for uh, this science i spent about 5 years there then for 3 years i was at the uh, g research center in upstate new york now uh, uh, my intention always was to eventually come back to india and try and make some sort of a contribution here as an entrepreneur uh, even in 2001 2002 I, that's was my thought so i went to g research because that was the place where the first 1.5t system on the planet was built and uh, really the target was actually built a 2t system but they failed and it stopped at 1.5t they could never go to higher field strength so that's how 1.5t got launched but physics demanded that 2t was the ideal field at which you should have launched an mr system anyway so i went there because under one roof you could learn all facets of the technology mri systems have cryogenics in it they have very serious electromagnetics in it mr physics software in it a uh, lot of mechanical engineering lot of rf engineering so it was a highly interdisciplinary field and so i i felt that it was very valuable to go and sit with people who had built the first scanners and and learn from them because if in the future one wanted to ever run a company like this one would want to appreciate all facets of the technology it was not possible to otherwise build something sustainable i think that goes to the point that prasanna sir was making that and also i something i believe in and something that's the only thing that's fun is if you want to do something is better to build something that you understand thoroughly uh i mean that's my interest i i've seen a lot of people who can bring technology and build something very sustainable as a business but my interest is to understand core technology and build a business from that so today we are actually an iso 1345 certified company and we have around 35 people we are in pinya uh so after niska yuna in 2009 uh, came back to india and thought of starting this company absolutely zero interest nobody wanted to even spend a rupee in, in a, trying to i mean it's crazy mad idea to build a complete mr scanner from scratch so i joined iit bombay uh, as an assistant professor in the electrical engineering department i spent about 5 years there and the idea was that uh, uh in a i mean i quickly realized when i went to iit that nobody cares what you're doing as long as you're employed there as a professor and you're taking the right courses so it didn't really matter right so i spent a lot of time actually at sri chitra journal i used to sit in the basement there at the scanner and i used to program that scanner i turned out that was the one institution where the scanner had an open software platform that you could actually program otherwise what happens is when you want to innovate and you and in my background was an mr physicist so my idea was to focus on innovative imaging technologies new types of contrast or new ways of acquiring images not build a scanner i didn't know how to do that so when i was doing that that was a, you have to program a scanner now software platforms are closed while in the, if you go abroad they are open so you can program so you can't do research in sri chitra journal the system was open nobody knew how to program it so they had absolutely no problem in somebody sitting in the basement and programming an mr scanner because nobody was using it anyway so i spent about a year and a half there late nights programming it and came up with some ip on the imaging front that kind of looked promising uh so it looked very promising in fact i thought it was a very cool thing and even today i think it's a we are working on it but uh, okay you have great imaging nobody is interested in it because they are like um, what's the point in looking at any imaging technology from your side because you're neither a customer 
uh, nor do you have something that without us you can't go anywhere it's an oligopoly right so what will you do with this technology so slowly the idea came that okay if you really have to succeed in this field you have to build a scanner and you have to build your own scanner the other reason you have to do that is because you know if you don't have your own technology ultimately no one respects you you can go around the world asking for technology and wanting to do it but if you can't stand on your own two feet no one respects you uh, one of our uh, funders is zoho corporation software company i remember talking to shridhar vembu shridhar is also a phd from princeton he studied at iit madras uh, i remember him telling a story that when he was at iit all the professors would give huge lectures on what to build what not to build and there was a visiting professor from japan one day he called all the students and he came and he said look you want to build all this right yeah uh, look at this compass you're using in engineering drawing he said yeah said, look behind it where is it made he said you know made in japan so he said you forget about all these big things you make this compass in india first so the point he was trying to make was if you you have to start small and you have to stand on your own two feet otherwise nobody will respect you so that was the situation we were facing also i was facing not we there's no we here i was facing so um as so i a few more years after iit and all uh, my wife who got a job in singapore as an assistant professor so i went there because uh, we said it's much better for the family to be there and we got a small grant um, from the government of singapore to do some prototyping so bought an old mr scanner and did some prototyping etc further develop the ip on software but then at this point again it stopped what do you do after that so then we hustled and hustled and hustled and eventually got through to the tata trust now tata trust mr tata somehow got to his office and he said no we should fund this and that's how we got started so he gave uh, through a not for profit incubator called social alpha uh, but tata trust money you know social alpha doesn't have that it came tata trust money we got around 7 crores i got around 7 crores now we have to go find a team and uh, how do you find a team at that point ge fantastic company which had built a great resource base for you know fantastic engineer in the field they started dismantling their team Uh, probably because china was more attractive or whatever be the reason so a lot of these guys were just sitting there and were looking for jobs outside of mr so i got in touch with a few of them and a couple of them came over board on board saying okay let's let's do this and then also uh, through some other networks got introduced to a young girl at uh, from this institute um, um dayan and sagar institute here in bangalore and so she came on board so we were the first four to come together one was a mechanical engineer was a principal mechanical engineer g built mr tables one was an rf engineer and this girl was a fresher uh, today she runs all of our software by the way she can she is the best software engineer for mr end to end she can do everything so that's how the company was founded we got funding from there we then got funding from indo us science and technology endowment fund and then uh, covid happened we ran out of money but we got money from dst which helped us get through uh, survive somehow covid and then through complete good fortune we got funding from shridhar and shridhar funding was very clear don't worry about eventual market and all get your product right and uh, yesterday we got our commercial license for sale and manufacture for mr systems so the journey of the company itself is 7 years but there was a huge journey before that why i am highlighting this is to say that a uh, struggle is absolute given it's an inevitable part of this journey especially the more complex something you're building the harder it is and at some points it does seem like complete madness also to do something like this but anyway uh, this is our journey and i'll just talk a little bit about the factors that drive what we are trying to do and it does go to the point that you have to think a little bit beyond your product which is the general factors that are uh, our objective is like ct ultrasound which again prasanna has spoke about where they have managed to address issues of accessibility and affordability and get that modality out through the country in mri that has not yet happened and so what are the general factors that are affecting healthcare sector in general one of the points that are very critical to notice is unlike other frontline technology sectors where as technological advances happen efficiency goes up and cost comes down in healthcare actually cost is going up as technology is advancing and uh, so that is one issue 
Diagnostic technologies, all of the points that were made by Prasna sir are valid. Uh, in fact, it's also seen as a service. It's, and in the more expensive an equipment is, the more they're like, okay, do I really want to pay for this? My ultimate objective is treatment and is this an input cost that I'm willing to bear? And MRI primarily is an out-of-pocket expense. MR and CT even today is. Unlike the West where reimbursement systems and insurance systems absorb the cost, here that is not the case. So economics really matter. Site viability, etc., is critical. And as a result, MR equipment actually lacks context. Now, if you build a system in Germany or America, uh, what are the pain points? They operate in different parts of the world under different circumstances. And what are the pain points here? How do you add value to customers in different parts of the world? That assessment is still not done in the field of MR to the extent it should be done. And even if it is done, the ability to pivot and build a new product is very, very expensive and difficult to do. So that has also not really happened. Um, these are some of the points we have noticed. Now the numbers clearly support all of this. If you go to tier 2, tier 3 cities, etc., over close to two-thirds of all of imaging requirements are by standalone diagnostic centers and small hospitals. So, um, and so you have to look at their economics and what is, what is impacting them. And that's where, again, uh, economics primarily. Uh, liabilities associated with such an expensive equipment being run in a uh, center, say, somewhere outside of a tier one state. Paying capacity of patients around that area. You may have the same MR equipment in Delhi and the same one in Bhuvaneshwar, but the patient capacity to pay varies drastically. And the uh, challenges of running the site are identical. Challenges of building infrastructure around it, the suite, as it was said, is identical. Everything is identical. So equipment hasn't changed, but the economics around it is changing and it's so varied. Um, power supply, uh, stringent environmental controls, etc. Right? Uh, actually, electricity cost is one of the highest in South Asia, actually. It is really, really expensive. So operating costs, costs over the life cycle, all of the points made uh, by the previous speaker. All of those are viable. Uh, but then at the end of the day, how do you make money? Scan volume. Everything comes down to how much volume can I get? How much can the patient pay? Equipment remains the same. So if the person can pay only less, you pay less, you maybe have to scan double the amount of patients in Bhuvaneshwar or Assam than you would have to do in Delhi or Mumbai. So these are all of the challenges around the product. And in MR, these continue to exist even today. The commercial landscape actually is reflecting all of this. These are pre-COVID numbers, but the installed base of MR is one-third that of CT. Number of equipment sold is one-third that of CT. Uh, oh, and there is a huge segment now that is actually buying refurbished MRI. And it is being driven by economics. Uh, but it only partially addresses the issue. It's still the same equipment, even if it's older. Riskier, no hazard analysis done, doesn't fall under any regulatory framework. Uh, operating costs are the same. Many of the liability issues are the same. So those pain points continue to exist. So oh, I'll just stop here to say that before we embarked on what we wanted to build, we actually understood the landscape of what is happening in our imaging modality to a reasonable extent. Uh, and we had to do that because uh, at the end of the day, we wanted to build something uh, from ground, from scratch, from ground up. Uh, we also considered issue of uh, technology transfer, etc. I'm happy to comment on that. Uh, but the point was that if you wanted to build something sustainable from ground up and wanted to have a long-term plan, again, we thought through everything. Okay, if I build this, what is the next thing I'll build? What's the next thing I'll build? How will I continue to add value? How will I continue to bring down costs? But for that, we had to sit down and do a first assessment of where is the real opportunity that exists and how do I create a niche for myself? Now, tomorrow, I cannot go and say, here's a voxel grids MR scanner. Images look great, everything look great. I'll run into the same issues that uh, Prasna had mentioned, which is that, first of all, a big hospital will say, I have GE, I have Siemens. Uh, last thing I want to do is have an unknown, uh, you know, uh, MR scanner in my hospital, even if it is a fantastic scanner. And I'll show you some images. We can uh, match it against any scanner on the planet. It's that good. But people will not buy. And uh, many of them are KOLs, key opinion leaders for a lot of these big companies. So uh, even when we go and talk right now to people who have done sales for a lifetime for GE, Philips, etc., they'll say, let's go find the five or six KOLs that we have. Let's get them to talk and say good things about us. That also costs money. <laughs> okay. And not to mention, it's very hard to do that. It's, it's the same game that others are playing. 
it's the ecosystem that they have built so that you cannot enter so how do you break into that ecosystem and that's a huge entry barrier for you so again the point is very valid go find people who have never bought mr scanners and want to buy an mr scanner i have ct i have ultrasound but i don't have mr i want to buy an mr system uh, such people actually even today are not even approached by major vendors like uh, siemens would not approach them uh, philips may not approach them they may say it's uh, they may not even be able to relate to that person like the first few customers that prasanna sir had mentioned i can tell you siemens will not even go talk to them because the germans can't even relate to that halwai and say who is this fellow he wants to buy mr scanner you know it i mean it requires a certain interface and an ability to connect with people like that in in the field of mr even today those opportunities continue to exist but the product has to change i strongly believe the product has to change so this is what we came up with we said okay we still need a full body superconducting system it matters uh, so now we are going down to a technical right we, what should you build so we said okay we should build superconducting magnets in the country no one has done that today no one in fact no indian institution has done it government no private sector nobody has built superconducting magnets till today uh, 1.5t remains the preferred field segment so if you go with the low field system this issue of i don't want a cheap system comes into play so i ran into some guy from mit who had built there's a company called hyperfine um he he came to me and he said look you know hyperfine bill and melinda gets support us everybody supports us came to india i thought you know we'll offer it we'll say it look just like 1.5t nobody wants to touch it and so i didn't have the heart to tell him that no one wants a cheap system <laughs> no one wants it no one wants their reputation to be impacted by it he said it's point of care it can look at you know water retention in the brain and all that so there's a different barrier there now he has to go fight with the clinician not with the service center or the imaging center he has to go tell the clinician who is actually interested in that particular disease uh, you know that okay buy mine and then the issue of it being cheap and many other things came into play so we said no 1.5t very very lightweight so that you can go to the first floor second floor of a hospital the, that parking basement equipment all that is valid you need flexibility in how you can install okay so weight matters you need very low power consumption we said okay we should build a system that less than 30 kV power consumption at its peak right now the the lowest power consumption for g system is 60 kV for siemens system is 50 kV we said we go below 30 the economics change when that happens and uh, you actually need to the one of the biggest impediments in installing mr systems is the service infrastructure it costs a lot of money even if you want to buy one somebody will sit and assess and say service infrastructure costs a ton of money i really don't want to sell to you so i don't want to go down to bihar somewhere and install something even if you can pay me a million dollars because over the life cycle will i make money the vendor also asks that question not to mention can you sustain it because it will cost more and more for me to actually keep it running for you so ideally get rid of liquid cryogens these are all points that we came up with again relating to the pain points in the previous slides that there is a business case to be made for a design what about cost well we said okay less than 400000 dollars can you build an mr scanner it cannot be the driving factor in the design it should be a consequence of the design and if it's not happening that way it's not going to sell so i'm not going to go out there saying i'm selling a cheap mr scanner i'm going to highlight all of the benefits of our scanner and let the price tag come in the end and let them work out the dyna- you know economics of it that's that was our approach we went through all of the uh, anatomies that are being scanned what one can look at what is not done if you go to many of the scanners the siemens etc they'll say look here is some you can do cardiac imaging you can do real time imaging you can do whole body screening turns out that no one does it in bangalore two centers do cardiac imaging why because if you have cardiac disease and you go into an mr scanner the first thing they'll say is for the next 45 minutes you should raise your hand up put it behind and lie down without movement for 45 minutes can a cardiac patient do that and then the diagnostic center says jaldi jaldi quickly because 45 minutes means double the money i need another patient to go in so the only place where they keep doing cardiac imaging without any worry without any concern with the patient lying in there is satya sai hospital in whitefield <laughs> because uh, the patient also wants the scan they're getting it for free uh, otherwise it's a very challenging thing so in the west if you go and talk to them they'll say we're doing cardiac we're doing this where are you doing it we're doing it at nih forget nih uh, the skill set is there to execute that in nih do you have the skill set all over the world to actually do cardiac imaging can it be done quickly viably practically not then why are you adding that as a fact value in your system so what we say is you can do cardiac imaging 
of course you can do cardiac imaging but forget about cardiac imaging do the other things so it's not that we go out and say we don't do cardiac imaging because that also has a negative connotation but what we try and say is 99% of what you want to do you can do comfortably and very effectively uh, that's our approach so many many such systems i mentioned hyperfine all these right point of care systems and all they shrink your patient pool they cost less uh, they try and use ai and other forms of technology to try and make it look like 1.5 tesla it really doesn't fly at the end of the day if you look at other technologies that uh, philips and others are introducing they address one pain point let's get rid of liquid cryogens but the system costs double the amount so there is a huge a balancing game that you need to do on the design front to hit that sweet spot so this is what we are building i can show you separately images of our product we said okay we will build a drop in mr suite okay so we'll not just think of the product inside not just mr the entire suite we'll control all of the environment inside all of the air conditioning inside how we mount it we can put it on a truck take it wherever we want we can ramp it down ramp it up it will consume less than 30 kV of power all the end user needs to do is provide a three phase power supply and connect to this container or connect a generator to this container what happens inside don't worry about it now when you do something like this the efficiency in the suite right that you want to build end to end goes up drastically and uh, the other really cool thing about this is this lends itself to many many other financial models that you want to introduce somebody could do time sharing with something like this we could lease it out we could rent it out uh, it is not running all of the time we can actually charge for over over life cycle service costs as a function of how much you're using it and we can actually do a lot of risk sharing with it so there are huge benefits to building a system like this and power consumption is very low very lightweight no liquid helium very tolerant to electrical and environmental variations because you have self contained the whole problem right <coughs> and mount it on a mobile platform combine it with assistive ai so you get first cut reading of your radiology image you don't have to wait for a radiologist to see it you'll immediately come to know if something's wrong wait for a radiologist to actually confirm it but you have a indicative assessment in the beginning and if you have a hub and spoke software model with this all data can go to a central node somewhere you can easily assess it you don't have to have a radiologist on site or a local local radiologist we can have a very distributed software solution to go with this so this is what we were planning to do now i'll just highlight this um we are 35 people but we build everything from the cryogenic magnet to the physics software to the rf engineering to the patient handling system and this was something we had decided on day one we will do we will build everything and why would we do that because the design harmonization you can bring in when you build everything is at a different scale altogether and another reason why we wanted to do this is it de-risks us strategically if i were buying cryogenic cryogenic magnets tomorrow from abroad uh, you have all of these import costs etc you need to deal with the person can jack up their prices whenever they want you have really not understood the core technologies around mr systems so if tomorrow i want to do something new as a next generation product i got to go back to the same guy and say i want a new magnet he'll say okay 2 million dollars i'll redesign it will not cost that much but i am at the mercy of another person so what we decided was okay we'll have to own all of this in house and that's why it took us 7 years it took us 7 years we have so far all together all put end to end every grant every money we have reached we have raised 10 million dollars so far so 10 million dollars has gone into this end to end to build all of this and even today we have teething issues but the fact is that if we succeed we'll have something truly sustainable for tomorrow we're not dependent on anybody to do something like that and so all of this requires a diverse set of skills the big gap in the company that exists and you know regulatory testing just before i get into the gaps that the company has the regulatory testing for mr systems took us around 2 and 1/2 to 3 years there's nobody in india who's done mr regulatory testing you go to i remember when the uh, we approached one you know testing agency like ul etc a testing agency so the guy came in and said okay sir where is your device he was looking on the table for the mr scanner so my engineer called him back and you see this room yeah that's our device so he said how do i test this and so we had to actually sit down and we had to go through the end hundreds of documents to understand exactly how to test mr systems end to end from biocompatibility to electrical to mechanical to all sorts it took us two years and uh, i think 50 60 lakh rupees of testing just to do that 
and all of us had to learn this um we went through the entire thing i this is a, just a photograph i wanted to show we've been running the rf antenna in the bore of the magnet for about 3 hours and taking a look at the heating that's happening on the inner surface cause a human being gets affected by it and there are regulatory requirements to actually ensure even that heating is not crossed a certain limit again what was required here was very deep domain expertise if you don't understand all facets of how to test your equipment you have a huge mountain to climb some consultant will show up at your doorstep and i think that is a recipe for disaster okay uh, yeah it is so here um, some photographs these are this is a patient table we said okay we'll have a 160 kg patient who can lie down on it okay so it should be able to withstand a static load of 640 kgs four times the weight so we put 640 kgs on it and they said okay from 15 centimeters you should drop 160 kgs onto the table it shouldn't break so, i mean the 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 mr scanners have been around for 40 years the regulatory system is extremely mature so even if i want to build something the odds of a solution coming out from the uh, west is much higher because they know exactly how to go about this we didn't know another mountain to climb to understand all of this we did this all at our facility because the regulatory testing agency you can't take this and give it to them they have to come and do it here so this is a ball test so they take a steel ball they put it on the tube from a huge height and they drop it on our head and neck antenna the shell shouldn't crack shell cracks you failed so the way the polycarbonate and the enclosure is made is critical all of these surfaces that are painted you have to go do biocompatibility testing with all of that to make sure that is compatible with human skin again i think that cost us around 12 lakh rupees to go and send samples and do all of that a every step you had to actually go and do a test and then uh, at the end of the day we had uh, we of course are 13485 certified okay and at the time when we got 13485 certification we were about 18 19 people and the total total number of mechanical engineering the total number of drawings are about 1340 only mechanical electrical different altogether hundreds of sops uh, it was a real nightmare to go through all of that and why did we have to go through all of that you uh, cannot go through the conventional route in the conventional route i would have had to raise 25 30 million dollars build a big team get a guy who is sitting in house understands how to do regulatory how to do testing i wouldn't worry about it that person will worry about it do it but you none of that luxury exists here because funding very serious medical devices is a lot of money and uh, also i feel that we got funding from zoho because they had faith that we had deep domain expertise they said okay these guys really know the technology yes market has to be thought through many things have to be thought through but do they really know what they are building and so that was another huge exercise for us that to get the right people to back us and be patient with us was a was a very painful exercise and we are very fortunate so we had to go through all of this and at the end of the day if you ever visit our company and you look at the repository of documents we have there's no end to it <laughs> there are so many documents so anyway today uh, we went through first a test sample with cdsco we built a few test samples we did concurrent testing the tamp sample that you have built usually the design team builds one so it gives it to the manufacturing team and says go build five of them but each one of them will cost you 10 crores so no so we had to build one and test the same one to save money but concurrent testing is valid it happens uh, we then went and did some clinical imaging trials and then we actually applied for a license got audited went through the entire cds exercise and yesterday actually in the afternoon we received a commercial license for sale and manufacture so we were like okay we still have a ton of teething issues do we have the right team to hustle sell convince people financial models all of the gaps that were highlighted in terms of the management team uh, I'll, I'll actually after that <laughs> comment on the challenges in building a management team also and what is the chicken and egg that constantly we face but having done all of that it was a real landmark event for us i, I actually my team was like okay even if we don't succeed or fail actually the company is a huge success because we survived seven years that itself is a success and we built an mr scanner and we are getting fantastic images these are the sort of images we are getting you you take this and show a t1 brain or a t2 brain or you show this is a knee scan 
this is the brain l spine uh, this is l spine lumbar spine the contrast is different on the screen but very hard to get spine scans so we are like okay this is also a huge success you're getting a human being getting them inside able to scan any part of their anatomy fantastic image quality huge success uh, voxel grade what else is a success we are counting successes because the odds of the failure are very high even today <laughs> so we're like okay maybe one year or down the line our teething issues in manufacturing may never resolve and we may run out of money but what other success is there we went and presented at the plenary sessions of uh, the international society for magnetic resonance in medicine where we were identified as the you know one of the top startups on the planet for, the, for having done what we did we said okay that's a success anybody who knows mri knows voxel grids today anywhere in the world you can go to stanford mri anywhere they'll know us we said okay that's a success what do we do now we somehow get a clinical site running at the earliest where we had many many issues because covid happened and they were hardware failures still struggling to fix it actually i think we'll fix it but i'm just saying absolute nightmare trying to find leaks in a magnet and trying to fix it cryogenic leak will be so small but it's killing your entire product the black day all the time actually so uh, i'm just saying that um, and then finally when we got regulatory clearance with the first indian company local manufacturer to get commercial sale and manufacturing license from government of india has never certified actually there's no company making it only to be certified as a manufacturer and allowed commercial sale of mr scanners is a landmark achievement because if nothing else tomorrow uh, even if we fail many of you guys who may be a success story might learn from what we have done and might really succeed right so it is important to set certain benchmarks so we said okay that itself is also a huge success because somebody may follow in the footsteps and really succeed so um i mean the path forward uh, i just actually like to highlight a few things here Uh, another success i'd like to say is when we we attracted some very very smart kids to come and work for us so one of the kids who got a very good salary offer from oracle he just called and said no i actually researched and found that okay this company does something in mri in compressive sensing and stuff like this and i want to work with them and i said we can offer you 50% of what oracle is offering we can't offer you more than that he said that's fine i want to do a phd eventually but i want to work for 2 years with you guys and uh, let's see you know if i do well if you don't mind give me a recommendation letter and i said no problem come he spent two years and then um, he actually said no the infrastructure here is so good that uh, if i could get into the professional program for phd or ms at iasc then i'd love to continue working for you while i'm studying there and you could if you could sponsor that you know so i said yeah i'll happy to sponsor it so uh, forwarded his resume to uh, a professor here who was very happy with him he started working with him and uh, he got uh, uh, admitted into the phd program now so he's staying on with us and so we're able to attract talent like this to come and work with us able to work with institutions like this to say look they also have an interest in knowing about technology like this why don't you study here while working for us and we'll sponsor an education for you and we're able to try and retain talent like that which is now slowly happening so even iit madras is willing to now work with us and set up a research center there um, give the open software platform build more expertise within institutions so that tomorrow it becomes easier to grow the field another reason we are doing this is because we are a private entity all our know how should somehow get transition to more stable places